What do you see? Wow, you have it in Jesus' name. I see increase. I see enlargement. I see multiplication. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even in this sanctuary, we see increase. We see multiplication. Yes, we do not walk by sight. We walk by faith. It shall be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to welcome you to this morning's um, live transformation service in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, the Lord that you have come to seek and you are listening to, we bless you indeed. He will enlarge your territory in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord gave us as a church the matching word of divine increase for this month that he would divinely increase us. And that the Lord will do in Jesus' name. Uh, our general text is Genesis 128, where the Lord commanded, after he had made man, he gave man the first commandment. The Bible says he blessed man and said what? Be fruitful, multiply, replace the earth and what? And subdue it. He said be fruitful, multiply, replace the earth and subdue it and have dominion. In other words, he commanded man to increase. Praise God. And you will be fruitful in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the part one, we saw the need for us to be fruitful. And um, we saw that increase has to do with fruitfulness. Increase has to do with what? With fruitfulness. And we looked at the word of God. And how that fruit bearing is synonymous to increase. That the way a plant increases is that that plant bears more fruit. The way humans increase is that we bear children and we multiply. So increase is by that divine increase. That increase is by bearing fruit. Praise God. And we saw that the first kind of fruit that the Lord will have us bear are what spiritual fruits. Because the spiritual controls the physical. If you can bear fruit spiritually, you will bear fruit physically. If you can increase spiritually, you will increase materially. You will increase. That's why he said in Matthew 6, 33, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? All, all other things shall be what? Shall be added. That's why we're looking at first how to increase spiritually, how to increase spiritually, how to bear fruits. All those fruits that, we, that were mentioned to us uh, in the word of God, how to bear them. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23, how do you bear those fruits? How do you increase in love? How do you increase in joy? How do you increase in peace, in gentleness? You know, some of us want to be gentle, but you find that you are the exact opposite of gentleness. Amen. Praise God. How do you increase in faith? How do you increase in meekness and in self-control? Also known as what? Temperance. Praise God. So, the Lord began to give us requirements for our spiritual increase. And the number one that we considered in part one is what? Abiding in him. Abiding in Jesus divine. And um, you need to go listen to it if you did not uh, partake in that fellowship. That's the first requirement, abiding in Jesus Christ. We looked at what it means to abide in him and uh, what happens when we abide, and the fact that the abiding must be total. Praise God. Today we're going to the part two of how to increase spiritually, how to increase in him, how to increase in the knowledge of God, how to increase in Jesus our Savior. We're looking at it, and that's why we are looking at, we are considering in the part two, we are looking at what? Uh, allow his word to abide in you. Part two is subtitled what? Allowing his word to what? To abide in you. Part one, we introduced it and we looked at abiding in him. And in part two, we are looking at what? Allowing his word to abide in you. Part two of divine increase is what? Allowing his word to abide in you. Praise God. Our text for part two is John 15, verse number seven. John 15, verse number seven. It says, if ye abide 
in me, which is the part one, and my words abide in you, and my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Beloved, his word also needs to abide in you. His words must abide in us. Apart from our abiding in him, his words need to abide in us if we must bear fruit. Because bearing fruit is a confirmation of discipleship. Bearing fruit is a confirmation that we are his what? His disciples. When you step down to verse number 8 of that John 15, John 15 verse number 8, it says there, Herein is my Father what? Glorified that ye what? Bear much fruit. Because verses 7 and 8 are tied together. You know, it says, Abide in me, and my words abide in you. It says in verse 8, Herein is my Father what? Glorified that ye bear what? Much fruit. You grow spiritually. You increase spiritually. God is happy when we increase spiritually. It says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear what? Much fruit. And it continues by saying what? So shall ye be what? My disciples. So shall ye be my disciples. A disciple is a follower of the master. Someone who grows. Someone who lives after the pattern of the life of the master. Somebody who is a true fruit bearer. Because in bearing fruit, you are increasing in the life of the master. So a disciple is one who increases in the life of the master by bearing fruit, by showing forth the exact things that you will see in the life of the master. You will see joy. You will see righteousness. You will see self-control. Praise God. Self what? Self-control. The thing is, wants to wants you to get angry, and you are saying, "No, I'm not going to get angry over this matter." This thing is saying, "Fight back, slap him, slap her." Say, "No, I'm not going to slap. I'm a child of God. Praise God." The thing is saying, "Everybody is doing it. Go and do it." I say, "No, everybody may do it, but not I." Praise the name of the Lord. So, bearing fruit is therefore through what, through discipleship. So we are told that. In addition to abiding in him, abiding in the vine, his words must what? Abide in us. Say to yourself, say in addition to my abiding in him, abiding in Christ, his words also must abide in me. Praise God. Don't forget, in the part one, we looked at the physical to understand the spiritual. In understanding what abiding in him means, we look at how a seed abides in the soil in order to produce. Because it says, except you abide in me, you can't bear fruit in part one. So, the seed now, having uh, abode in the, um, in the ground, the seed has been planted, right? The seed is abiding in the vine. And we said, what that means in part one, that the seed had to die, had to rot, and a new life had to come. So does it, after that has happened, does the plant begin to produce fruit immediately? No. The new life that comes after the old seed has died, the new life that shoots out and begins to grow, that new life has to grow, has to germinate, has to mature, uh, to the extent that it now begins to do what? To produce fruit. Praise God. So, from the physical, looking at the example of the plant, right? When the seed has been sown and the seed has, been, has died, has gotten rotten, and a new plant shoots out, and one plant, and then it breaks into two, you know, and is that the end? Do you just leave it like that and it begins to bear fruit? No. You continue to do what? To water to water that plant, to water that plant. And as you water it, the minerals in the water and the one in the vine, in the sand, they mix together and they begin to give that plant nourishment. And the plant begins to do what? 
begins to grow and it begins to grow. And as you continue to water, the plant continues to grow until it gets to maturity and it does what? It begins to bear fruit. Praise the name of the Lord. The same is applicable. That's why Jesus Christ said in that John 15 that if you abide in me and my word abides in you. The word is the water. The word is the water that is being applied on the uh, growing plants and the plant begins to grow. Praise God. So if the plant must continue to grow and grow to the level of bearing fruit, two things are very important. That plant must continue to abide in the sun. If you uproot it, that's the end. It must continue to do what? Abide. And apart from abiding, it must be continually watered. It must be continually watered. Praise God. So that the nourishment may come. So in our case, we continue to abide in Jesus the vine. We continue to abide in Jesus the vine. And we must, in addition, have ourselves watered by the water of what? The word of God. That was why he said, if ye abide in me, and my words abide in you. His word must what? Abide in us. The word must abide in you. The word must abide in me. Praise God. John 8.31 John 8.31 Jesus Christ emphasized here the need for the constant or continual uh, application of the word, of the water. John 8.31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye want my disciples indeed. Don't forget, we have shown that discipleship is a proof of increasing in him. It's a proof of bearing fruit. If ye continue in my word, if you allow the words to continue, and like we have said, if you don't continue to water that plant, what will happen to the plant? It will dry up and, and die. Just like it has happened to very many believers. They got planted, but they were, they didn't, they were never uh, watered continually. They left, they left all the sources of receiving the water. The water of what? The word. The water of the word. And the level of watering determines what? The level of growth. How rapid you grow. Some plants, when they see, according to what Psalm 1 says, he says, blessed is the man from verse 1. Blessed is the man that what? Walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And upon it does he meditate what? Day and night. He says, it shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water. Yes, Whose leaves also what? Does not wither. He says, that, he says, whatever that man shall what? Lay his hands upon shall prosper. The tree planted by rivers of water. That one takes water continually. He says, whatsoever. That plant is evergreen because it takes water continually. So, beloved, if you must increase, if that life of God that you desire, I want to be quiet. I want to be peaceful. I don't want to fight. I want God to be manifested in my life. I don't want to be quarreling with my spouse. I don't want to be abusive. I don't want to fight. If it must be so, apart from abiding in Jesus the vine, his word must abide in you. His word must abide in you. If the word does not abide, you cannot produce fruit. You cannot get to a level of fruit, uh, fruit what? Production. You can't increase in him if his word does not abide in you. Incidentally, we are in the world that does not want much of the word. We are in the world that wants much of prayer, much of other things, but what? The word. Let's call for a Bible study during the week. Let's see how many people will come. Praise God. Let's see how many people. But let's come for prayer meeting. And you will see the place will be what? If we say, ah, 1,000 prayers to bring down what? The mountain. You see the place will be what? Jam-packed. <laughs> Praise God. But let's
call a meeting and say, let's read through the gospel, you know, the entire New Testament in seven hours. Say, I will read at home. I will read at home. I don't need to come and read. Praise God. But we need the word. The water must come in for the plant to grow, for the plant to increase. Praise God. That's why I want to share with us briefly seven reasons why the word must abide in you. Seven reasons quickly why the word must abide in you. Number one is that the word is a lamp and a light. The word is a lamp and a light. Psalm 119 verse, verse 105 confirms that. Psalm 119 verse 105 says, The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What does lamp and light? One to his feet, one to the path. One is for short distance, one is for long distance. Praise God. The word of God illuminates. It, illuminates. it brings light. And when there is illumination, you see, you don't stumble. You know, you see the path you should take. You see things as they are. You don't fall into trap. The word of God does what? Illuminates. It makes, it guides you as to how to go, what to do, what not to do. And the way you should do it in the way of the Lord. Psalm 43 verse 3 says, Oh, send out the light and thy truth. Let them lead me. Send out thy light and thy truth. Let them what? Lead me. The word leads. As a light, as a lamp, it leads. It leads. Amen. The word is also, uh, is also a source of warning so that you don't stumble. We are looking at it as a lamp, a lamp and a light. In Proverbs 6, verses 20 to 24, Proverbs 6, 20 to 24, I like this warning. It says, my son, keep thy father's word, commandment, and forsake not what the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall what? Lead thee. The word leads. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. Have you taken note of that? That's why at times you hide the word in your heart before you go to bed. So that in, the, in, this, in your sleep, in the spirit realm, when you are asleep, you know, the Bible says when men sleep, the enemy comes in. When they come to you in the realm of the spirit, you'll be able to quote the word. <coughs> Excuse me. You're able to quote the word. <coughs> you are able to quote the word. Praise God. So, um, it says, when thou sleepest, it shall what? Keep thee. It shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk what with thee. That is the word. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 23 says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is what? Is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of what? Of life. Verse 24. It says, To keep thee, the word it wants. To keep thee. The word will keep thee from the evil woman. Evil from the evil man. The word will warn you. Say, don't go. Don't go. Don't say, I am a child. Don't say, I know what to do. The word will say, hey, it is written, flee every appearance of evil. Appearance of, it didn't say, walk gently away. It says what? Flee. Disappear. Disappear. So, it says to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of what? A strange woman. Why many people fall prey is because they have not taken hold of the world as a lamp and a light. Number two, the word gives life. The word does what? Gives life. Just as the water it gives life to the plant, the word of God is the water we need. It gives life. Psalm 119, verse 25, it says, My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. The word quicken is the word make alive. Make my life, make me alive by your word. The word of God makes you alive. When you want to become depressed, morose, and the enemy is pumping thoughts, negative thoughts, the Holy Spirit will just bring the word. It will quicken you. You just rise up in faith and say, No, my soul do not be, do not be dejected. Rejoice in the Lord. There's still hope for you. Praise God. Psalm 119, verse 50. It says, this is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word hath quickened me. Comfort in affliction. What is it? The word. Are you afflicted? What should give you comfort is what? The word. By the help of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 4, verse 4. 
Jesus Christ, he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live what? By bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The word is life-giving. It gives you life. The reason you are panicking, the reason you are fainting, the reason you are behaving as if there is no hope again, is because you have not been taking in the water of the word to give you life, to strengthen you. And John 6, 63, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited what? Nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, they are life. When you take in the word, life comes in. There are times in my study, I shout, I jump up and shout. When the Lord quickens a word to me, a logos, it becomes a rhema to me, I shout. And like I told you, I will say, Satan, where are you? I want to box you. Praise God. I want to just give your punch, give blows to your head. Praise the name of the Lord. Number three, the word is faith producer. The word is what? Faith producer. It generates faith. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by what? By hearing, and hearing what? The word of God. And we know, according to Hebrews 11, verse 16, that, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. If you cannot please God, you can't abide in God. If you cannot please God, you can't bear fruit. So, faith is produced what? By the word. If you must grow in him, you must grow in faith. And that faith comes by the watering of the word. The word also, number, seven, number four, is a sword. The word is what? A sword. Ephesians 6, 17 says, And take what? The helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. That is the only uh, offensive weapon given to us. Just one. You say, ah, how come we have very many defensive weapons? We have the shield of faith. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the boots of uh, gospel of faith, we have the birth of what? Righteousness. How come he gave us only one thing to fight with? It's because of the, uh, the potency of the word. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word is what? Is quick and powerful. Someone say powerful. powerful. Yeah, the word. This word you are playing with, this word you, you play, play light with, is quick and powerful. It's alive. It's quick and powerful, sharper than what? A double-edged sword. It, says it pierces or divides asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. And it says, this is what? Of the thought and intent of the heart. The word can do, can work inside the flesh. That's why when we are praying for people with this understanding, you can direct the word and say, you what? Go into that liver. Do this. Go into the kidney because it can go between the, mouth, the bone and the marrow. It can also deal with thoughts. The word is that powerful. It can address physical, it can address spiritual, it can address emotional. It's a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Praise God. So, the world is a sword. You fight with it. As you are abiding in him, the enemy wants to come to pull you away. You fight with the sword. You fight with the sword. And the sword is what? The world. The world. Number five, the world cleanses. The world does what? It cleanses. It's a purgative. It purges. It purifies the word. The word. The word. You want to live pure. You want to be holy. Then you have to make use of the word. You have to take in more of the word. Psalm 1. The virgin. It says, by taking heed according to your word. By doing what? They say it's not possible to live in this corrupt world. It's not possible to live to be pure. It's not possible to live holy. It's not possible to live without taking bride. It's not possible to live without sin. It's not possible to live and get married as a virgin. Who told you? He says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not what? Sin against you. There are very many people. You just need to hide the word. Hide the word. You will not sin. You will not sin. You will not sin against him. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Say, where we turn shall a young man what? Cleanse his way. He says, by taking his word according to the word. I'm not even talking about hiding now. I'm talking about the word being a cleanser. How do you cleanse? The word will come and begin to take away, purify. John 15 verse 3. He says, now ye are clean through the word which I have what? Spoken unto you. 
John 15, 3. You are clean. You are made pure. As he said, as I've been talking to you and you are receiving the word, that word is purging you. That word is purifying you. It's cleansing you. You may not know. Praise God. Because what you have had that you should not do, you are not going to do them again. Praise the name of the Lord. From the discourse that ensued at our school of the world today, there are some things that were shared. You know, the need to forgive. The need to also delete. Because if you say you are forgiven and you, rem you, you still keep them in your diary, you keep them in your phone. He said, I don't want to forget. Archive. You put it there. You will ever be remembering it. There are some that you don't even keep physically. You keep them in your heart. So I have to pray to God to delete them. Say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me to delete. Let me not remember again. It will help you. It will happen. You will not remember. An occasion can just come and the Spirit of God will just bring you to that message. Oh, thank God. I've even forgotten. Praise God. You are able to do it by the power of the Spirit. Something we can't do in the flesh. It takes the Holy Spirit helping us. And it says it helps our what? Infirmity. Our weakness. What we cannot do by ourselves is ever there to what? To help us. Praise God. John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. To sanctify is to cleanse. Sanctify them. Make them clean. Make them holy. Thy word is is truth. Ephesians 5.26 He says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. By the word. The word is a cleanser. The word is what? It's a cleanser. It cleanses. It purifies. It purges. Number six. The word immunizes. I've gone ahead to talk about that. It immunizes. Psalm 119 verse 11. Thy word have I what hid in my heart that I might not sin. Immunizes. So that it won't happen. Once you hide the word sufficiently in your heart, it keeps you. It immunizes you from the propensity to sin, from the uh, drive to want to commit sin. The word of God has that power to do it. Ask those that the Lord has helped. It has been through the power of the word. The power of the word. By hiding it in your heart. Praise God. And the seventh reasons why the word must abide in you, not all, but I'm stopping here. The word is an instrument of deliverance. The word is what? Yeah. It is an instrument of deliverance. John 8.32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Truth, the word, make you free, sets you free, delivers you from bondage. Proverbs 11 verse 9, Proverbs 11 verse 9 says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor, but through knowledge, somebody say through knowledge. <laughs> through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Knowledge from the world. Knowledge from the world. Amen. Knowledge from the world. Through knowledge. You can't be crying to be delivered and you are still going back to the same source of bondage. But when knowledge comes, when the word, you hear the word, and knowledge comes, you know this is the source, and you will not go there. Praise God. So, beloved, when the word abides in us, the word performs all these attributes, these functions, these attributes of the word. The word makes sure that we are cleansed, makes sure we fight against the, of, of, uh, the intrusion of the enemy. The word makes sure that we are immunized. The word makes sure that also that what we are guided, we are protected, we are instructed. And as that happens, what happens? We begin to grow. We begin to grow in the knowledge of God. We begin to grow in the ways of God. You know, because without that, if you don't have faith, you can't grow. You can't grow. Praise God. So when the world performs this function, we keep growing. And we grow to the extent of producing fruits and increasing in the Lord. You will increase in the Lord in the name of Jesus. So finally, how do you get the word to abide in you? We have seen what reasons why the word must abide in us. Seven of them we saw. So how do you get this word to abide in you? So that all these reasons, all these attributes that the word uh, does can be uh, applicable in our lives. Number one, it is by reading the word. We look at just seven also. Seven ways of getting the word to abide in you. Number one is what? By reading the word. The word of God. We're talking about the Bible. You read it. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. 
Read your Bible. Pray every day if you to grow. If you want to grow. If you want to grow. If you want to grow. Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. If you want to grow. Don't read your Bible. Don't pray every day. Don't pray every day. Don't read every day. Don't read your Bible. Don't pray every day. If you want to die. Praise God. So you won't die in Jesus' name. But I'm just telling you what it means. In spiritual death, many people are dried up spiritually because they don't read their Bible every day. They don't pray every day. Father, thank you for waking me up this day. I thank you in Jesus' name we pray. And they will do like this. Pia, they have gone into the world and they spend all the hours. When they come back like this, if they are uh, ladies, they just throw the bag on the chair, straight into the kitchen. Bah, bah, bah. Food. Amen. And once they land the food like this, at times, why they are still eating? Amen. They are going. You know, they just manage to wash their hands, crawl to the bed, off they go. Another day. Father, thank you for this new day. Thank you as I go. Keep me. Protect me in Jesus' name. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pia, enter the world. And like that, the circle. That person will be dry. No time for the world. Some people, the only day they open their Bibles are on Sundays when they come to church. I want to get home, you know, hunger. We spend so much time in church. As they get the bag and Bible, fear on the chair, <laughs> kitchen, you know, because this stomach likes food so much. Praise God. If the person is an ogre, you go and put legs on the table. Food is what? Food is getting ready. <laughs> Praise God. But I know we don't have such ogres here. The ogres we have here, they help their wives. Abby? Yes, we help our wives. Praise the name of the Lord. At least I still helped my wife yesterday. Praise the name of the Lord. I will not be so. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord, though. Don't worry. I know you like to hear that. I won't tell you what I did. Praise God. If you want to hear that, come to see me. For tete a tete. Amen. So, we must read the word of God. Number two, we must meditate on the word. Meditate means take time to ponder. Look at a verse. Look at two verses. Look at an incident and turn it over and over and over. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Meditate on the word. Meditate on the word. While the message is going on, a verse can jump at you. And it's, it's for you. you. Just note it down. Later, keep looking at it. Turn it over. Turn it over. And the Lord will speak to you there. That word will remain in you. Meditate means to spend time thinking over the word. Praise God. Number three is to study the word. Study is different from reading. When you are studying, you are taking time to analyze. What is this saying? You are looking at the meaning of the words. You are comparing times with times. You are looking at other references. You are taking notes when you study. Praise God. Number four is to memorize what? The word. These are the things to do to get the word to abide in you. Number four is to do what? Memorize the word. If I ask us to stand up now and say, recite four, five memory, uh, uh, recite five verses from your memory, from your mind, how many of us will be able to do it? Say, give me five from Old Testament, give me five from New Testament. Praise the name of the Lord. But we draw the ears of our children and say, memorize, memorize. Have you done your memory verse? What about you, mommy and daddy? What about us, the adults? We need to hide the word. To memorize is to hide the word inside of us. Praise God. I saw a Bible game yesterday, and I picked up, I said, I will start again. It used to be my custom. As I finish my quiet time, I will pick a verse. I will commit it to memory. I will be rehearsing over and over again. Like that, I, I retain the uh, memory verses. Praise God. Let's not forget those small things. They are the things that help us to help the world to abide in us. When the devil came to attack Jesus, to tempt him, he said what? It is written. Praise God. So don't let it be when the devil comes to you. 
in the sleep. And then he's coming, he says, it is written. Say, what has been written? Say, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Google, Google. You are now pressing Google. And that time, your battery can go low. Satan says, what has been written? You know, and like that, they might watch. We just give you a bang, bah, you know. Let it be that you have committed to memory. You can dish it out to the devil. And once you dish it out the first time, second time, third time, what will he do? He will leave you. Praise God. But we say it is written. He say, where is it written? He say, in the book of Jacob. He say, Jacob, is it Old Testament or New Testament? He <laughs> say, J- J- Jacob. No, it's not the book of Jacob. It's the book of Aaron. Praise God. He say, where is this? It's in the New Testament. He say, open. You are looking for Aaron chapter 1. <laughs> Praise God. Say, ah, they said Aaron and Moses. Okay, it's the book of Moses. You are looking for Moses. You go to the, um, to the index. You can't see Moses there. Praise the name of the Lord. So make sure you memorize what? The word. The fifth thing to do is to listen to the word. Listen to the word being preached to you. Listen to the word being taught. It's good to listen to music. Wonderful. But play, listen to messages. Listen to preachings. Listen to teachings. You know, as you listen, they remain in you. The word gets to abide in you. Two more. What do we do with the word? We teach the word. Say, teach the word. It's been said that when you teach, you retain more what you teach than when you are taught. So if you attempt to teach what you have been taught, you will retain it more. So try to teach. So what what we do uh, as we grow is uh, when we are taught some things, when we get back, we try to teach others. And as we teach others, we get to retain it more. And finally, you do what? You preach the word. Somebody say, preach the word. So, beloved, if we do these seven things, you read the word, you meditate, you study, you memorize, you listen to the word, you teach the word, and you preach the word, the word will abide in you. And it will cause you not to, uh, not to dry up, not to die but you will grow in him and you become fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet and tell the Lord, Lord, help me to have your word abide in me. Lord, help me, Lord, that your word will abide in me. Let's talk to him. Talk to him. Begin to talk to him. Lord, help me that your word will abide in me. Help me, Lord God. Help me to have time for your word. Help me to have time for your word. Help me to have time to read the Bible daily. You ought to, every believer ought to read the Bible daily. You need to read. We have a reading plan in church. Have you been following it? Where are you? Where are you? Are you up to date? How many books of the Bible have you finished this year? Make up your mind. Lord, your word will abide in me. I will grow. I will increase in you. I will be fruitful. If you can be fruitful spiritually, you'll be fruitful financially. You'll be fruitful maritally. Because what to do will come to you. The world is a lamp, is a light. You'll be guided as to what to do. Talk to God. Lord, help me to create time for your world. Help me that your world will abide in me. Are you a market woman? Go to market with your world. Whatever you are doing, find time for the word of God. Play the word from your computer. Play the word from your radio. Listen to the Bible being uh, being, being read. Meditate on the word. Study the word. The time we spend on social media or non-essentials. On social media. Spend it on the word. You will be fruitful. You will increase in him. The word brings about healing. The word brings about deliverance. Lord, help me to find time for your word. Talk to God. Ancient words ever true to me, me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words be back. Ancient words, ancient words ever true. Changing you, we have come with 
So make up your mind today. Draw up a timetable. Have a set time. Don't just go back and let this world just go away. Get home. Set a time. Lord, help me to read my Bible this time every day. Help me to read my Bible this time. I must read my Bible 30 minutes, one hour daily. Set a target. If you don't do anything about it, nothing gets done. Set a target. As a family, have a time you read the word of God together. Set a target. Have a plan. And the Lord will help you. Father, we want to thank you. Your word is a source of transformation. You said in your word in Romans 12 verse 2, and be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Lord, by your ancient word, help us to be transformed. Help us to increase in you. Help us to be fruitful. Help us to find time for your word. Let your word truly abide in us. When your word abides, a lot of things can't abide in us. Fear cannot abide in us. Discouragement cannot abide when the word is there. Temptation will not be able to find any way. When the word is there, it will checkmate it. Let us help us that your word will abide in us. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.